In 2003, I was working in D.C. I had just returned from a, a trip abroad. And that morning, I was filling out paperwork, catching up on my emails. And I had a, some, a lower back pain, but I attributed it to long flight, being tired. And the pain started to creep up my back. And a couple of hours later, it got to the point where I couldn't breathe. And I was feeling just a tad bit nauseous. But that's when I decided we needed to go to the ER because it, it just didn't feel right. They ran the tests. We got an EKG done, so it wasn't a heart attack. They did blood work. Nothing was coming up. And then they did a CT scan. I had an aortic dissection. It was obvious. There was no question whatsoever. The very first thought once they told me I had an aortic dissection was that I was dead. I was done. Um, my father had died in the hospital of aortic dissection. I, they couldn't save him, so I figured they couldn't save me. I tried not to panic. They gave me medication to lower the pain level. And at that time, they called my mom. And they got the history on my dad and my grandmother. I stayed, I stayed in a hospital after the initial dissection. I stayed for two weeks. Within 12 to 15 hours of being released from the hospital, I had dropped my mom off at the airport, and my cousin was staying with me. We had gone to lunch, and during lunch, I was feeling kind of nauseous. The pain just radiated throughout my chest. I grabbed my chest, and then I fell to the ground, yelling at my cousin to call 911. And my cousin did the best thing that she could have ever done, which was to tell the EMTs not to do any chest compressions. Once I got to the ER, luckily everybody there recognized me from the previous two weeks. They were kind of scared when they saw me back again because they weren't sure what was going on, especially with the major chest pains in the front, not necessarily in the back. Uh, my cousin that was with me, she had to give authorization for open heart surgery. Apparently I had dissected in my left coronary artery and that caused a heart attack. And they worked on me for hours. My cousin had to try to catch my mom mid-flight. Uh, while my cousin was waiting for my mom to return, the doctor came out mid-surgery to say it didn't look good. Hours later, the doctor came back and said that I had survived and I was doing really well. The bottom portion of my heart had been damaged from the heart attack. And at, within 24 hours, it, was, it looked like I had CHF, congestive heart failure, but they weren't sure until two weeks later when I couldn't get off the ventilator. Once they stabilized my heart, my damaged heart, they put me on the trach and they took me to a trach rehab center so that I can relearn how to walk, talk, um, learn how to eat again. Within a month and a half, they decided to put me on a pacemaker and that helped things tremendously. I was very hopeful that uh, um, anything that could be done um, that we could do for Jen. There was no doubt in my mind that uh, with uh, Jen and Terry both so determined to find uh, the best way to to reach that safety zone, that we could manage her blood pressure and, uh, and try to minimize her mitral regurgitation, try to maximize her heart function, um, and then see, and see whether uh, she'd be able to uh, go on for some time before she would need another surgery. And uh, also, I was confident that with good imaging follow-up, that uh, her rest of her aorta could be washed very carefully. It just gave us hope that I wasn't going to die within the next month or the next day or, you know, within a couple of weeks. It's just that feeling of hope gave me hope that I wasn't just another walking dead. I had a week before I was supposed to go up for my checkup and I decided to cook pancakes. And as I started flipping the pancakes, 
I started getting lower back pain. It just got worse and a sharp pain just radiated from the middle of my back, leaning towards the left. And within me, I just knew. I knew something had happened. I knew it was wrong. It was a wrong type of pain. It was just wrong, wrong, wrong. I was lucky enough to get a CT scan like within hours of arriving in LA. And that's when I found out that I had dissected into my right coronary artery. And that meant I needed a heart transplant immediately. I'm just very happy that we insisted that Jen should get the latest CT scan, which is a gated 64 slice that will show all the detail uh, of her coronary anatomy. The third dissection that we were able to identify only with this very specific um, 64 slice CT imaging studies um, very well in detail showed that the right coronary was dissected uh, very proximally and this dissection line continued on all the way to the very end portion of the right coronary in the indicating that really coronary bypass surgery and uh, valve surgery in her case would have not been a good option. And only a, a heart transplant with uh, a particularly resecting all her uh, vulnerable dilated ascending aorta, that would have saved her. And that's what we ended up doing. I was able to get my heart transplant within three months of it being diagnosed that I would need a heart transplant. The day uh, a heart donor became available, uh, I can't describe it, but uh, uh, it was a pretty happy moment uh, in our team. Jen's uh, coronary dissection um, follows the same uh, pattern of her aortic dissection. These patients, uh, they have an overall connective tissue delicacy in their body. And although Jen looks very normal from outside, uh, she is extremely delicate uh, inside. In a specialized centers and programs, there is a lot more attention now is paid to these patients that although they look very normal from outside, that how uh, big or dilated is their aorta inside, and that is only possible these days with good imaging technology. Um, I think in Jen's particular situation, the uh, very positive family history would have definitely raised a red flag. And uh, we always try to uh, make it an important uh, issue with, with the families that they need to monitor all the family members uh, for a dilated aorta. As we know, um, Jen uh, looks good now, but uh, there were times uh, that family and friends were told that Jen may not make it. Um, having had the first uh, dissection, um, Jen was jeopardized, and with the second uh, dissection, only a miracle made her uh, uh, through all the, those difficulties. And with that third dissection, if it wasn't for definitive replacement of her heart through heart transplantation, and also on this, with the same operation, uh, removing her entire ascending aorta, um, she would have not been here today. What I would share first of all is to listen to your body, to not ignore signs that are that something is wrong and don't feel like uh, you're bothering your doctor keep on it and also find a doctor you can trust and I would also suggest to take the time to do the exams and to do your historical research on your family members now that I know I can survive I know my future family members can survive as well.